Welcome back. Your business news now, sponsored by Mike Apple. No, good morning, Mike. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you doing? Wouldn't you like to sponsor something, though? That'd be nice. Brought to you by no, no, Mike Apple. No, 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 no. Can't. Okay. Journalistic integrity. <laughs> can't play favorites for any one particular brand. One day, Mike. One day. I see your nope. name everywhere. All Not right. doing that. Let's begin then. How Let's, you doing? I'm how's okay. Your, how's your weekend? Yeah, how's your it, weekend? Yeah, it was skating and tobogganing. That's kind of awesome. the gist of it. How about you? Watched a lot of football. Oh, that too. Watched a lot of, yeah. What? I turned off the Bills game at 19 seconds left. Uh -oh. What happened? <laughs> Nothing. Mess. Nothing at all. We'll break it down <laughs> for you later. Just joking. It was crazy. Mm, uh, yeah. Okay, let's let's get to the markets because <laughs> this is a nice way to start the week. Not. No, not. it's not, unfortunately. <laughs> and we're already coming off what was the worst week for markets since the early days of the pandemic, Melanie. Uh, we're starting 2022 with a definite downward trend for stocks, the complete opposite of what we saw for much of 2021 because – things have changed dramatically, whether it is the geopolitical risk that the market is watching with Russia and Ukraine. Then you've got uh, a completely new environment for investors because all of the talk is that interest rates are going to be going up, perhaps as soon as this week at the Bank of Canada. That's Wednesday's big announcement. And then you've got a whole host of quarterly earnings that are due. The biggest companies in the world set to report this week, Apple, Microsoft, Intel, Tesla, uh, Amex, I think, is on the docket. I mean, it is just a, a, a day and a week coming up of more volatility, and that's continuing the trend. Last week, over four days, the NASDAQ lost 7%. What a mess for the tech stocks. Yes, last year, you had to buy them. This year, apparently, no one wants to own them. Okay. At least uh, not yet. Yes. At least not yet. Uh, you know who wanted to own Shopify? A lot of people. Now what? Mm -hmm. uh, it's 50% below its record high. This mm -hmm. was, uh, for a time last year, Canada's most valuable company. It had surpassed the uh, market value of the Royal Bank. Uh, since that point in time, it has been pretty much uh, heading lower. And this morning starts today at about $1,100 per share at the TSX. At its peak, it was 2228 and that was just last November. Um, there's a little bit of talk that Shopify is discontinuing uh, some of its partnerships. And uh, again, the tech sector, anything that was at a massive multiple or valuation is uh, being taken down significantly here in just the past. Uh, it, it, and it's happens very quickly. I think that's the key here, Melanie, that's catching, catching a lot of people on off guard because of the, uh, the rapid pace of this decline mm -hmm. and the size of the losses as well. Absolutely. Okay, let's talk about some losses here. Uh, Bitcoin, mm -hmm. I like that how this yep. was written. I'll give a shout out to Sabina. More than a bit down. Ah, good. <laughs> Very good indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, <laughs> though, uh, Bitcoin at its peak was $68,000 U.S. This morning, I've got it below 34 grand. So we're looking at it again, a 50% loss top to, well, we haven't reached bottom necessarily. And uh, all of the cryptos are getting sideswiped. It's anything that was seen um, or is seen as a more risky asset. Bitcoin's just caught up in everything that's going on with the tech space right now. And uh, I don't exactly know where the bottom is, but, um, you know, the, the true believers say this is the, the buying point, perhaps, because, again, you're not paying record prices for it. Um, finally, for you, Mike, we're going to continue to follow what's happening with the supply chain, but you are zeroing in on some orange juice. Yep. Uh, call Mr. Beeks and the Orange Juice Futures contract from the classic movie Trading Places because the uh, orange juice crop this year is expected to be one of the smallest in decades. The uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture does these forecasts and a thing called citrus greening. It's a fungus, apparently, that has hit the Florida orange juice uh, production. It also apparently kills the trees, and that is certainly, you know, it's not just a one-year phenomenon necessarily. This could be a uh, multiple-year event for that uh, Florida uh, citrus uh, crop. Unfortunately, Melanie, you know, it's, I, I was talking to my brother over the weekend, and he said, boy, Friday, you had a lot of bad news, and it's <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately... Just a bit. My brother Richard's an avid, uh, avid viewer of the show, and he's not, he's not wrong again this morning. Oh, Richard, good morning to you, Richard. Okay, I've got an important yeah. question when it comes to orange juice. Pulp mm. or no pulp? Oh, no pulp. Well, you know what? It, it, mm, that's a good... It, it depends what you're using it for. Just drinking. Just drinking. 
no, no, no like is juice. it in a, like in a mixed drink or something? No, no, just a glass of orange juice, straight okay, up. Okay, I'll go pulp there. There but it is. But if it's mixed with something else, no, no pulp. I like to chew my orange juice. Extra pulp, my friend. <laughs> All right, have a great day. You too.